Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, October the 24th, 2020. It is currently 9.23 a.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from Victory Baptist Church. Now, I know as soon as I get ready to explain what happened, some of you are going to roll your eyes or you're going to be, we told you to stop doing that. And and I know that you've told me to stop doing that. And I know I never listen to anyone. But, but sometimes, sometimes I find myself just, I, I, I find myself completely shocked and confused by the things I hear on Christian radio. Now, I know, I know, I know everyone has told me you need to stop listening to Christian radio because if you continue to listen to Christian radio, you're going to have a stroke. You're going to end up, you know, your blood pressure is going to go way up. You're, you're, in, you're going to end up dying. You're going to have a seizure. Stop listening to Christian radio. And I know that's good advice. I know it's good advice. But I have to tell you something. And, 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 I, and I'm being serious with this Be, and because it, it may come across that I'm just joking or being sarcastic or, or you know, trying, you know, exaggerating this. But, but there, is, there, is a, there is a part of this that's, that's very serious. Right? In, in fact, it's very frustrating. In fact, it's very depressing. I find myself over and over and over again that whenever I hear Christians speak, when I hear Christian radio, uh, when, I, when I see things coming from the Christian world, I find myself time and time again, and this has really been true most of my Christian life, I find myself so many times I'm at odds with the way Christians think. I'm, I'm at odds with the way, the, the perspective that the majority of Christianity holds. I find myself at time, I find myself at times not even feeling comfortable or welcomed within Christianity at large. Like, here's Christianity at large, and I feel like I'm not welcomed there. That's, in a sense, it's like I'm a stranger. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't belong. Uh, I, I don't understand that they, they are, they're speaking a different language. They think in a way that I don't understand. It's like, I cannot relate. And you know how frustrating that is to be a Christian and feel like you don't have a place within Christianity, that you don't feel comfortable there. You don't think like, you don't think like them. And then when you begin to speak, it's Christians who usually get upset with me. Typically, I mean, I found that to be true. A good portion of my Christian life is, is I, I disagree with Christians time and time and time again. And I, I'm just sometimes baffled by it. I, I can walk into a Christian bookstore and look at what's going, you know, all, all the things being sold and just shake my head because the majority of the stuff sold in a Christian bookstore I think is complete and utter garbage, in many cases, straight up apostasy. And I don't understand why Christians you know, are, are just go along with it and think everything's wonderful. I, I just don't, I guess I cannot relate to the average Christian. I, I don't, we're, we're from two different worlds, I guess. I, and which is something, which right there just should tell you something is seriously wrong when a Christian can't feel comfortable within Christianity. Now, maybe, maybe some of you can relate to that. Maybe some of you think, well, the problem is, is you. Well, and you're right. You know, maybe the problem is me. Maybe. Or maybe Christianity has, has, has drifted so far from historical biblical Christianity that anyone trying to maintain historical biblical Christianity is not going to feel welcomed. It, it, I think that's a possibility as well. But I say all of that. Because it seems every time I turn on Christian radio, within minutes of having Christian radio on, I and, and typically I have I only have Christian radio on typically uh, when I'm in my car driving here to the church. That's when I usually have Christian radio on, and usually by the time I reach the church, I need to come into the church and fall, you know, fall on the ground and pray <laughs> because I I'm I'm at the point of total despair, frustration, anger, aggravation. Uh, at times, just complete shock of what I have heard, and today is no different. I My goal was to come out here and talk about so many other things, but I had Christian radio on, and I I could not, I couldn't believe, I, I couldn't believe it, all right? So I'm going to share with you w what I heard. I would like, if anyone out there knows the origin of this way of thinking, I would love to be able to track, you know, trace and track this where the origins of this kind of thinking started. Like, 
I, I, I just, it's so, it's so out there uh, that I don't even, like, it, it, it literally makes absolutely no sense. But, but I'm going to share it anyway, okay? Here we go. This was on American Family Radio this morning, 91.3 FM in the local area. I'm driving my car, and all of a sudden, this person comes on Christian Radio and makes the following statement, all right? And I quote, Your mind is not the boss of you. You are the boss of your mind. Let me state it again. Your mind is not the boss of you. You are the boss of your mind. And then they go on to say that if your mind tells you this, you tell your mind that's wrong. If your mind tells you this, you tell them that it's wrong. You tell it that it's wrong. Now, they, they I don't remember all their specific examples, but basically... If your mind tells you certain things, then you have the ability to then tell your mind that those things are wrong, and then you can choose to think differently. Like, I I don't even know how this works, and the reason I don't know how this works is your mind, well, that controls your thinking. That, That controls your perception. So how can I control, how can I like, is there some part of me that operates independently of my mind that, like, here's my mind. My mind is thinking, and then I, there's another part of me that can think, right, and can reason, and then can think and reason and come to a conclusion that the way my mind is thinking and reasoning is wrong. Like, how, how, do, you, how do you make that happen? Like, what does that even mean? It just seems like it seems like an absolutely ridiculous statement, and I and I could I could not even believe I was hearing it on on Christian radio again. Let me give you the statement: Your mind is not the boss of you. You, you who what you with I guess a separate mind. You are the boss of your mind. So I I got here to the church. I did a couple of things. First, I just let me fact in fact pull this up really quick. I just did a quick uh, search for a definition uh, for the word mind, all right? And here's what we have. Mind, the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world and their experiences, to think and to feel the faculty of consciousness and thought. So the mind is what's inside of us that enables us to be aware of the world around us, to be aware of our experiences. It's the mind is where we think. It's the faculty of consciousness and thought. Well, if, if the, the boss, if the mind is not the boss of me and I am the, the boss of my mind, then that means there has to be a separate part of me that can, that can enable me to be aware not only of the world and my experiences, but there's another part of me that can be aware of how my mind is thinking, how my mind is perceiving things, and then I can correct my mind. So what is this separate part of me? What, what is this separate part of me that's not my mind? Um, what's the separate part of me that is the, uh, is the faculty of consciousness and thought? Like, I, I don't even understand that. I, another definition the mind is the set of faculties, including cognitive aspects such as consciousness, imagination, perception, thinking, intelligence, judgment, language, and memory, as well as non-cognitive aspects such as emotion and instinct. So the mind is very much a part of like, it, it controls all of these different things. So I want you to hear the quote again. Your mind is not the boss of you. You are the boss of your mind. And, and then they go on to say, if your mind thinks this way, you tell your mind is wrong. Well, who's telling the mind, who's telling the mind that it's wrong? There has, there would have to be another part of me that thinks, that can judge, that can reason, and then, and then can draw a conclusion that this is incorrect. And then I need to, like, I don't need, how does that work? What does that even mean? And so then I thought, well, maybe it's on Christian radio. Maybe they're using a different concept for the word mind. So I came to the church and grabbed a Bible dictionary. 
I look up the word mind, all right? Here's, here's how the Bible dictionary defines the word mind. The part of a person that thinks and reasons. The part of a person that thinks and reasons. So if so, according to Christian radio, that the mind can't be in, that, that's not in charge. It's not your boss. The mind is not doesn't have control because there's a separate part of you that really controls your mind. So what you do is your mind thinks a certain way, your mind perceive thing, perceives things a certain way, and then this other part of you, not identified by Christian radio, this other part of you kicks in, and then it goes, wait a minute. My mind is thinking this way, this way, and this way. Well, I think that that way of thinking is incorrect. But what is the other part of you that's processing the thought? What is the other part of you that's processing and reason and judging and determining and and realizing that the perspective that your mind has is incorrect? Because that other part of you, wouldn't it not be using your mind? Or are you saying that we have two minds? Are we saying we have the mind and then we have another part of us that does the same job as the mind, but it can even do it better because this separate part of us controls our actual mind. Like what, what kind of nonsense is that? And this is on Christian radio. American family radio is a very big Christian radio network heard around the country. So where, where does this idea come from? What does that even mean? It sounds like complete and total and utter nonsense. That's what it sounds like. Like I would be, if I was in a car and I was riding with a lost person and we had Christian radio on, which I would never turn on Christian radio with a lost person in the car because um, I would be, who knows what they're going to hear. But if we were riding in the car, there would be a lost person go, wait, you Christians think... Well, I don't even, they, they, would, they wouldn't even know how to, 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 they wouldn't even know how to express their, 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 their confusion. They'd be like, wait a minute. So you Christians think with something other than your mind. How does this work? Because, and, and, and some people say, yes, it's, it's the Holy Spirit inside of me. So it's the Holy Spirit. So, so the Holy Spirit inside of you thinks, but how do you process what the Holy Spirit is thinking? Do you not process it with your mind? Like how, what, what is going on? Can anyone explain this to me? Where does this idea originate from? And is it not as insane as I think that it's insane? Maybe, maybe, I, maybe my thinking is incorrect. So the other part of me needs to judge the way I think with, I, I, I don't get it. Now, I do completely agree that our thinking, everyone's thinking, is greatly influenced by lots of different things, right? Our thinking can be influenced by our parents. It can be influenced by our peer group. It can be influenced by what we read. It can be, it can be influenced by so many things. So many things can influence our mind, our perception. It, it, it's, you know, you can have someone reading, you know, whacked out crazy conspiracy theories, and that begins to influence the way they think. And then you come along and try to challenge their conspiracy thinking, and they'll look at you like you're crazy because their conspiracy thinking is the dominant factor influencing the mind. And that, and so they, pro, they perceive the world through what they fill their mind with. Now, I do believe as Christians, we can choose to fill our mind with, obviously, we want to fill our mind with truth. We want to fill our mind with the word of God. We want to meditate on God's word day and night. We want, we, and in fact, we, we, we all know this passage. I'll just have it right here. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, I think the way we re- the way the mind is renewed, it's renewed, it's it's it, it it begins to think differently, see things differently, because we are renewing it with the word of God. The more we meditate on God's word, that becomes the dominant factor influencing the way our mind thinks. So I do understand that, but it's still my mind. The the Bible doesn't say, hey, renew that second mind, renew that third mind. No, we have one mind inside of you, and that's how you think. So how can you then judge the way you think? Like, you have to have something outside of you, right? Right say the word of God 
and then I read it and I'm go, I don't, I don't like that. I don't think that way. That goes against the way I think. And then I have to process what I read. And if I accept what I read, but that's all happening in the mind. Like I, I'm, I'm still trying to understand the, your mind is not the boss of you. You are the boss of your mind. The, the the mind is the boss in the sense that it's the way, it's the very thing that is how I'm going to think about anything. Like I like it's hard for me to think differently than the way I think. Now now I I my I can expose my mind to different perspectives and different ideas, and then hopefully within my mind I'm reasoning and I'm willing to say I'm th- I think this way. But that says something different. So like, but that's all a part of the cognitive process. That's me struggling with different ideas. That's my mind coming to either accept or not accept. They, they, they I, I, I just, I don't get what they were. I don't even understand what they were trying to say. I, I don't even understand what they were trying to say for them to make that statement. The boss is not the mind of you. You are the boss of your mind. It was their mind that had to think that, process that, and 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 move them to speak it. <laughs> right? I, like, are they saying that their mind thought differently? And then the other part, like, I don't even know what they what they mean by that. That just seems some like nonsense. Is is what it sounds like. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want to get across as, as nonsensical as that statement seems to be as much as I don't even understand what they were talking about, it just makes me concerned that Christians seem to have lost any ability to reason and to think logically. It seems like Christians at large are willing to swallow the most ridiculous ideas, the most ridiculous conspiracy theories known to man. Now, I know my... my, Skeptic friends, agnostic friends, atheist friends, they always mock me when I when I start talking about how Christians don't think properly. And they're like, well, of course you Christians don't think properly because you're all a bunch of idiots and you don't have two brain cells and you lack the ability to be logical and, and you don't understand what reason is and you're all brainwashed and you're all morons. Okay, I get that. <laughs> that, that that's how they, they perceive it. Sometimes I feel like there's some truth to that because I, I, you sit back and go, wait, wait, how do Christians buy into such contradictory ideas? Like, I'll get Christians who will, who will, you know, send me an email and it'll be like, okay, if you make this argument, well, then this argument is true. Like you're con, like, and sometimes they'll hold two contradictory ideas at the same time and try to argue for both ideas in one email. Even though real, they don't even realize that their their argument literally contradicts itself. It's like it's like logic one hundred and one, reason one hundred and one, critical thinking one hundred and one. I'm I'm sometimes just confused by what I I find in Christianity, and for for Christian radio to be telling everyone, hey, you're the you're the you're the boss of your mind. Your mind is not the boss. Well. So I'm somehow I operate independently of my mind and I can I can critique my mind, judge my mind and tell my mind that my mind is wrong. Well, what it would be, it would require thinking, (laughs) consciousness, cognitive function for me to determine that my mind is wrong. So that means I would have to have a separate mind. So you're saying I have two minds? Two minds? And even if you say I have two minds, well, then how do the two minds interact? Like if I can just, why do I need, why do I need to judge the one mind? If I have another mind, why don't I just rely on the second mind and, and forget the, four, the first mind? And how did I get a second mind? <laughs> what do you, and I know some will say, well, remember the scripture says, uh, let the mind of Christ be in you. That, in other words, let the way Christ thinks, let that thinking be in you. That's scripture outside of me. I am to read process it, accept it as being truth and try to change my, try to allow this to change the way I think. It becomes, it becomes, a, it's information I put in my mind and then I have to try to rely on that and, and allow that to become the dominant factor in how I think. 
It's not like we end up with two separate minds. I, I, it doesn't even make any sense. And that's why it says the renewing of your mind. We have one mind has to be renewed. How do we renew it? By meditating on God's word day and night, by bringing in a biblical perspective over and over and over and over again to fight all the other things in our mind that influences the way we think, that influences our perception. You're, you're, uh, sometimes they say it this way. Maybe a cliche, but there's some truth to it. Garbage in, garbage out. If I fill my mind with all kinds of of wrong ways of thinking, then I'm going to access that wrong way of thinking and process things. And that'll be the conclusion. That'll be the data that I spit out because I, I've got, but if I, from a Christian, as a Christian, if my filling my mind, my cognitive process with scripture and with biblical thinking and biblical wisdom, then hopefully the data I spit out will reflect biblical thinking and biblical wisdom. It's just, I, I don't even understand. When, when you're driving your car and Christian radio is saying, hey, listen, listen, you, yeah, you driving your car. Hey, your mind is not the boss of you. You are the boss of your mind. I'm sitting there thinking, what world have I entered into? What, what nonsense is that? And then, I, and then I'm thinking, well, well, according to them, so if my mind thinks that they are wrong, then do I go ask my second mind if my second mind has a different opinion? And what if both of my minds say that they're insane? Okay, like, I, I don't even know how I'm supposed to even process such a ridiculous statement. Like, it's one thing to just hear some person, you know, some small podcast, you know, some person in the middle of, no, you know, some person just in the middle of nowhere talking, right? Like, like me, small podcast in the middle of nowhere. Okay, that's one thing. But just please remember, this statement was made on American Family Radio. They're not some little small podcast in the middle of nowhere. They're a major Christian radio network influencing millions of people. And that was literally stated on Christian radio. And obviously someone had to um, – it was a pre-recorded statement. It was used uh, like uh, as kind of a – Kind of just as a spot, uh, well, a program was on. It was just kind of like a little, I don't know what you, almost like a commercial, like an ad for American Family Radio. So that means someone took this statement, edited the statement, and then created the the the, the little music before and the music after. So it was it was so someone you know used their cognitive process to take the clip, cut the clip, pro, you know, edit the clip, produce the clip with you know the intro music and everything, and play the clip. So it had to go through the entire, you know, editing process, approval process, and and no one stopped and go, wait a minute, wait, wait, what do you, how many, are you saying we have two, like nobody bothered to go, are you saying we have two minds? Well, like, what, what do you mean by that? Like, no one stopped to go, this makes absolutely no sense. No one caught it. No one, no one thought about it. No one, it, it's one thing to say something like, I, I, I know this. When you're live on the air, at any moment you can say something, and then later you're like, well, I didn't quite say that the correct way. Okay, uh, yeah, that probably wasn't uh, kind of messed up there. Okay, I, I can accept when something live, but this wasn't live. This was something that they took, they cut, they edited, they process, they produced. It, it made it through all, who, who knows how many number of people, and, and when they heard the finished product, someone didn't go, that makes absolutely no sense. If the if if your mind is not the boss of you and you're the boss of your mind and you can tell your mind what to think and you judge your mind like how does that even work? So um, I, I don't know where they get the idea. Again, the Bible says the renewing of our mind, seeming to indicate we have how many minds? One. Yes, we let the mind of Christ be in us. Yes, the way Christ th- thought thought his thinking needs to become my thinking. But his thinking is recorded in the scripture. I read that with my mind. I process it. I think about it. I struggle with it. And then I either acknowledge, oh, that's not really the way I normally think, but I'm going to try to accept this way of thinking. But all of that is happening with my mind. I'm thinking it. I'm processing. I'm critiquing it. I'm acknowledging it. I'm rejecting it. I'm, I'm struggling with it. So there, there you have it. Uh, another day of me not, <laughs> another day of me making a bad 
decision. With my mind, I made a decision to turn on Christian radio. And as a result, now I am here trying to think about what I heard, trying to make sense of it. And if you know the origins of this way of thinking, um, that, that somehow we have two minds, and I don't know why we just don't get rid of the one and go with the one that supposedly works right. I, I, I don't even understand that. I mean, are you, I, I, I don't, yeah, I, I, I'm not getting them. Are they trying to say, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to use my cognitive faculties here, trying to process like how, how you could come to this conclusion. Are you, are, are they saying that because you have an, an old, maybe an old nature and a new nature that the new nature comes with it with a mind and the old nature has the old mind. And then you try to think with the new new mind to judge the old mind. Maybe that's where they're going. But even that, the Bible says renewing of your mind. Like there's nothing, there's no way to prove that we have two minds. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to wrap my mind around what they were trying to say. I, I don't know. They didn't obviously offer an explanation. It seemed insane. Um, but there you have it. There's, there's, uh, there's Christian radio. What to take from this this morning? I would say this. Please, please, as Christians, let's, let's be good stewards of the mind in which God has given us. Let's use it to think properly. Let's not continue as Christians to look foolish in the sight of everyone because of, of our thinking is so absurd and broken and illogical and confused and foolish and embarrassing and at times just nonsensical. Let's, let's demonstrate that as Christians, that yes, we think differently than you in the world because we have a renewed mind because we believe this, I'm holding in my hand, the Bible, we believe it to be the word of God and we use this as a filter to our thinking and that we try to see everything, we try to take, our, we try to take every thought captive. We try to stop and go, okay, this is the way I think. What do the scriptures say? What do the scriptures say? Now, the scriptures may go against the way I think, but I have to then choose to try to go with the scriptures because, I mean, everyone does that. Everyone can read things that go against the way they think, and then they have to use their cognitive function to process that information that goes against the way they think. Yeah, I uh, we'll stop right there. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be fascinated to get your thoughts. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Just, just, another interesting, just another interesting thing I heard on Christian radio. I, I, w- I wish I could offer a better analysis. I just don't even understand it. So, but I'll stop right there. Everyone have a great day. I'll be back on the air live here in just a few minutes. Everyone have a great day. God bless.